thinking about the United Kingdom and the arable sector, of course, very much a globalised sector. The equipment manufacturers for the arable mm. sector are global players. And there's a sense that most of the development might well be made in the Midwest or wherever and introduced and imported into the UK. That's not true of grasslands in Western Britain, that very much more specific uh, type of agriculture. Do you think we're doing enough to achieve developments in science and technology? Is it specific to our really, you know, substantive grasp? I suppose the simple answer to that yeah. is no, and a lot of it is due to where the funding for research yes. has come. Obviously, we privatise a lot of our crop, arable crop breeding, uh -huh, yes. and obviously there is a far greater market for seeds for a grain, for example, mm. because they're tradable on an annual basis. Where there's grass seed, mm -hmm. it's it really, in, a, in terms of a business plan, it isn't a very lucrative one, and therefore I think mm. public more public expenditure needs to be required in yes. um, in plant breeding and, and plant technologies. And, I, and I, I'm a great believer that uh, biotechnology, and I'm careful not to use the word GM, because I think we can, should consign that yeah. to the dustbin just for now, but the opportunities through biotechnologies are, are considerable, not yeah. just in yield improvements, yeah. but in terms of drought resistance, and there are I was reading something very recently yeah. about um, two uh, American companies working together to get uh, maize, which has um, quite drought-resistant yes, qualities, this, yeah. which can uh, increase yield by six or eight percent under difficult positions. And I think if if we are if we paint a picture of agriculture, we must be somewhere near peak oil. Phosphates. You know, we, we we'll have, not, we'll have mined, mined up <laughs> phosphates out in thirty or forty yeah. years' time. So we really are moving from an oil-based economy to a bio or a bioscience-based yeah. economy where, where agriculture produces food for humans, feedstuffs yes. for animals, fuels, a lot of yeah. building materials, maybe biomedicine. So they, We've got to, we're moving to an economy which is based on current sunshine rather than absolutely. ancient sunshine. And, I think and I th the sunshine is harvested yeah. in the agricultural sector. Yeah. So and I think if we can convey that to students, and certainly the young mm. youngsters that we have sometimes come in on mm. the campus, then you, you can make agriculture and everything related to it yeah. very, very exciting. So it's really this, it really is the science and agriculture, really is the science and technology of the 21st century. No, really. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if I perhaps move to a, a different uh, topic, uh, universities in general. And of course, this, this autumn in 2009, it's reported that we have much larger numbers of applicants into the universities. I mean, in principle, is it, is it better that we expand the capacity to allow more students to study, or, or should we use this opportunity to make it more competitive and improve the quality of the students? How, where do it, you stand it, on it, this? it depends really how you define <laughs> quality. I, I'm a great advocate really that we should give as many young people opportunity to be exposed to as high a level of education right. as is possible. But clearly the resources aren't there to do that. And um, I think it's, we have to recognise that a lot of universities have different philosophies and do different things. And certainly our philosophy uh, at Harper, Harper Adams, Harper Adams is, is, is very different. And therefore our, our sort of selling point to young people is, and the statistics come out tomorrow, I understand, for employability of graduates uh -huh. right. in, uh, who graduated July 2008. Yes. And I, you know, despite the recession, our figures will still look very good. We've, in June, turned out, I don't know, about 430 yeah. students out onto Sandwich. Thus far, one month, there's only 30 that are unplaced, that's for sandwich. Yeah. So the message is to young people, if you're going to invest and put your own money and come out with a debt from higher education, at least go somewhere where the job opportunities are good. And therefore, and you're I'm prepared for the work, prepared for the job, Absolutely. and matched to an yeah. employer. And I'm 100% behind the government and their emphasis on STEM subjects, science, technology, yeah. engineering and maths. And notwithstanding um, all the cultural and yeah. arts and humanities, but I think it's, it's, to, it's to get a balance and therefore not hoodwink these young yeah. people who are making a commitment that there will be a job at the end of it. They need to do yeah. their homework and be very careful in their choice of higher education opportunities. Yeah. So I think, yes, the, yeah. we will certainly need as many people with higher level yeah. skills yeah. and by that I, you know I mean the sense I have is that what better a long-term investment can one make than yeah. in, pro in producing the professionals of tomorrow yeah. 
And uh, a second point too that, um, you know, at 18, 19, some people have already shown their talents, but others still have yet to reveal them. And uh, therefore there's a, there's a sense that if we can bring more in, we will see more talents developed and, as you say, exposed to the highest levels that they can cope with and hopefully... I think one of my, my concerns is, and, and um, we have strong links with China, we have students from India, as you yeah. have here, really the number of engineering graduates for example that are produced in some of these countries compared to our yeah. numbers so it doesn't need a, a great intellect just to, <laughs> to determine Absolutely. where where maybe yeah. the development of technologies yeah. will be in the in the yeah. future so really I, I think we have to we live in a knowledge-based economy Absolutely. and we have to produce knowledge yeah. people yeah. To, yeah. to make and people that, that are able to respond very yeah. quickly I can't remember who made kind of statement, but the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who can't read and write, but those who can't learn and relearn. And I think that is a, a uh -huh, very, very yes. good example because it, the whole issue of continuing learning, CPD, yeah. continually getting credit towards masters and postgraduate is, is an equally important part of the HE, SAMAS, uh -huh. those initial entrants and getting the 50% yeah. in. It's, it's, we need to take the best ones even, even higher um, in a globally yeah competitive yeah. um, economy. Yeah. It's a bit like the Olympics, really. It is absolutely like the um, Olympics. I, 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 talking of prizes, um, which, of course, the Olympics is all about, uh, <laughs> Harper Adams won a very, I think, critical prize, the uh, Times Higher Education Prize for an outstanding contribution to sustainable development. This is in the autumn, two, just last yes, year, yes. 2008. Now, uh, as I understand it, what, what happened was your catering department and, and, and the team, the catering team, set about trying to produce uh, food for, for the community that was truly sustainable, sourced locally, even on your own farms and so on. Tell us a little bit about that because it, it looks like a, a pathfinder experience for a university to me. Well, it illustrates the importance of getting a, a, a simple message. So, you know, we'd all yeah. heard about food miles. Right. And then one of my colleagues coined this term food meters. That's right, food and meters. And that captured the imagination because literally we were moving animals from our pig unit, um, a matter of yards. Obviously, yeah. obviously they had to go via yeah. the, the sort of abattoir and processing yes. uh, to the college. And therefore, um, as a campus, uh, higher education is a key role, I think, in the whole sustainability uh -huh, right. agenda and changing mindsets and in, in my view an important part of that change in mindset is is that we do all these things on the campus do as i do and not do as i yes. say and therefore Absolutely. we the whole as many universities have photovoltaic battery driven vans encouraging students to share lifts um building design yeah. with sustainable so we've really features. got to be exemplars of what we're Absolutely, what we're yes. proposing yeah. for the rest yeah. of society yeah. and we and are actually having them there even though you know, one or two of them are very difficult to justify financially yeah. in, in terms of payback. At least it makes young people aware of the whole list of things they can yeah. pick up. And, you know, we've gone ahead with a combined heat and power unit about three years ago. We are actively planning the design of an anaerobic digester for the farm waste and taking food waste yeah. in from um, local public establishments. Yeah. So. I think it gives the students then a very yeah. clear picture of where everything yeah. fits in on that food I supply chain. I think it's really been a huge success and it sounds like you're taking it forward. Wynne, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, thank you again. Thank you Cheers. very much. <laughs> <laughs>